Well, see, the way the way to eternal life, some people probably call it life, but it's actually eternal life. See, the only way you can attain eternal life, obviously, is if you have repented. Now, I'm not talking about saying a prayer, walking out, going out and living like the world, and expecting everything to go hunky-dory. No, you must repent. Jesus Christ himself says, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. See, death has no partiality. Death does not discriminate. Death does not care for male, female, black, white, or whatever you claim to be. Death does not discriminate. It will come to us all. Hebrews 9.27 It is appointed for man and woman. It is appointed for man once to die and then the judgment. Well, see, a lot of people, a lot of people say, well, if only God can judge me. There's been songs written about that title. People have that tattoo on their backs. Only God can judge me. Only God can judge me. Well, guess what? God's Word says He has handed all in the book of John. God has handed all judgment to the Son, and all authority over to the Son. When you stand before Jesus Christ, you will have to get a, give an account of yourself to Him. And whether you repent it or not, God's Word says um, every knee will bow under heaven, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, I'm not talking about the limp wristed American sissy version of Jesus Christ that you see on uh, Netflix or CNN or or what have you, or any other mainstream uh, line media outlet, which is pretty much all of them. I'm talking about Jesus Christ of the Bible, Jesus Christ, the name above all names. Jesus Christ's name is above Muhammad, it's above Buddha, it's above the Pope, his name is above all names. Well, beyond recognition, because Isaiah says, we looked upon his countenance and we knew him not. See, once... Uh, you repent of your sins and turn to Jesus Christ. You not only will you have eternal life, but in this world, yes, uh, thank you. you'll have uh, the peace of mind knowing that once you draw your last breath, you'll uh, you'll receive eternal life in His name. Well, see, you can know for sure. See, a lot of churches teach you there's no assurance in God. No, we're just normal sure Christians. We don't we don't go to these tax exempt churches. See, First John five thirteen says so do y'all go to a church around here? No, we meet with other Christians, but not a church organization. What do you think about churches life, which, uh, no amount of pleasures or anything well, this world can Most of them, to. they're actually part of the government. When they uh, sign a contract with the Internal Revenue Service, you know how they're tax exempt? You get a tax break. The only reason they, they can do that is because they're part of the government already. Okay. And Jesus said you can't serve two masters. You're going to either hate one and love the other or despise one and cling to the other. Remember when Jesus said that? Yeah. So they can't serve Jesus Christ and the IRS at the same time. So when they sign that contract, they've made a promise that they're going to do what the IRS says. So they can't be of Christ. Okay. That, that, oh, yeah. You can't. Right. Right. And they, what they did is they volunteered to do that. Okay. They, 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 they went to the IRS. They filled out the paperwork. They hired lawyers so that they could have this contract with the government and have the protection of the government over them. Me, I, we don't have any choice about paying taxes. Okay. I didn't solicit the IRS or anybody else. So that when I when I buy a gallon of gas, that I can, that I can pay taxes. See and see and they're doing just the opposite. They're doing that so they don't have to pay taxes. Okay, like like look. Well, the, the only things the only things that their money is allowed to go to is what the IRS says it can go to. They can't give their money to anything they want. It has to um, it has to benefit the community in the in the state's eyes. So, that, so they can they control the money that goes to the churches. See, and, and when people pay for those buildings, the government can do whatever they want. Have you ever seen people voting inside of a church building? Yeah, yeah. I voted inside of World Outreach Church, and there's a church on. Uh, like, even they have like Starbucks inside of that. I don't think that's right. It's kind of right, but the reason that they can have voting booths in there is because they have to. Because they are of the government, they're not of Jesus Christ. That, that's why. That's why they have control over that. Yeah, I mean, it's something you. I'm. I'm not going to be able to tell you everything standing out here today, but it's something you should look into. 
because that, that's why you're not going to see, for example, World Outreach Church, the leadership of them, you know, preaching against abortion outside of Planned Parenthood. Okay, because Planned Parenthood and World Outreach Church, for example, they're both 501c3 tax-exempt organizations. They are, un, they are under the same yoke of bondage to the government that they have volunteered to put themselves under. Okay, so they can't go out and preach against Planned Parenthood because they'd be violating their contract. You can't have one part of the government protesting against another part of the government. Okay, they, they, would, they would lose their tax exemption and they would lose all their property. The government would, would seize all that property and all their vehicles and everything. So that's why they don't do that. Yeah. Is that do the smaller churches do that too? Yeah, just a, I, I would be hard pressed to find any church, any any Christian organization, whether it's actually Christian or not, that didn't have a tax exempt status with the IRS. Because that's how you make money. Okay, when you get people in there, you say, hey, you can get a tax break. People will give more money. They know that. And they don't care about the truth of Christ. They care about their status and their position, and you know, having having their easy job, their nice, you know, their nice office or whatever it is. You get on staff there. That that's a pretty easy job. They don't work eight, ten hours a day like the rest of us. You know, you don't. All these church buildings, all these church organizations, all over the place. How many of them you see out here preaching the Bible anywhere in Murfreesboro? None of them. Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel. What's that about? Now, if you were to confront them on it, they'll say, oh, missionaries overseas. Oh, we give money to, you know, gospel for Asia, over in Asia, or, you know, somewhere, you know, far away. But Jesus said most of these people are going to hell, and they don't care. They don't care because they're not of Christ. They're not going to preach these people. They're not going to tell them how to be saved. They're not going to warn them about hell like Jesus did. That's how you can tell they're false. This one says, Awake unto righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Now, Paul wrote that to the uh, Corinthians in the city of Corinth. See, there's a lot of uh, people that call themselves Christians, but then, then they make excuses for their sin. You know, whether it's fornication or drug abuse or gluttony or lying or being prideful, sin not. Awake unto right, do what's right. Okay, that's what Christians should be about. Okay, and then this one over here. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, most, most people that call themselves Christians, they don't really care about Jesus' commandments. Matter of fact, they, they, they hardly ever even read it. Now, if you ask them, do you read the Bible? Oh, yeah. Well, maybe what the, whatever the pastor or whoever puts up on the screen on Sunday morning, but they don't read it for themselves, so they don't care about his commandments. And if you, I, last time I was here, out here, some guy came up and started cursing and yelling at me, saying he was a Christian because I was preaching the law of God, because I was preaching Jesus' commandments. So that's part of the reason why I have, have these verses on this banner. I have several banners. So. I don't know. I just always thought, like, from my perspective, I feel like if I'm going to preach to a bunch of unbelievers, I'm not going to hit them with, like, a complex scripture like this. Just because, like, I don't feel like they're going to receive it. Like, Jesus says you can't be sick to a baby, so you have to, like, start all the things practically. And I don't know, like... Personally, if I'm going on outreach, I would use, like, other like, this is my commandment, I give to you to love one another for I don't know, that's just, like, my personal belief, but I'm, I'm not, like, saying not to, I just don't, like, you, you, know, you know what the problem is with your position? You're going by your beliefs and your feelings. You said, that's what I would do, that's how I feel. You need to do what Jesus says. You need to do what the Bible says. Jesus says to love one another. Well, that, that was John the Apostle, and he said that to who? He said that to Christians. He was talking to Christians that we love one another. I'm gonna look up the scripture because I don't have it off the top of my head. Okay, make sure make sure you don't look it up in a Catholic Bible. Oh no, yeah, look yeah look up in the King James Bible. So y'all um y'all are like the people that only not like saying the people, but like some people only believe you should read King James. Well, this is this is God's words, perfectly preserved in English. Okay, if you if you read any any of the other modern versions in English, there's going to be errors and there's going to be contradictions in them. Okay, one one common one is in uh, I think it's John chapter eight, um, where it makes look make Jesus look like a liar. 
okay? Jesus, a bro Jesus' brothers come up to him, they approach him and they, say, and they say, are you going up to the feast? In the King James Bible, Jesus says, I'm not going up to the feast yet. And then if you keep reading, he goes up to the feast. No problem. In the modern versions, it, Jesus says to his brothers, he says, I'm not going up to this feast. And then he goes up to the feast. It's very subtle, okay? But the Bible says, even from the beginning of Genesis, that uh, Satan is one of the most subtle beasts of the field. He's very subtle. So you take out the word yet. Now, if, if I told my wife this morning, I'm not going up to the square yet, okay, to preach, and then I came up later. But then you take out the word yet, it completely change everything. Exactly, and, and that, those are the things you're going to find in, in modern Bibles. And, and actually, there's tons of verses just missing. Like if you go through the NIV and you just pay, pay attention to the, uh, the verse numbers, you know, they're all numbered, right? They're just missing. Yeah, it's just stuff that's been taken out. And, and behind that, what they've done is they've taken, um, I mean, it's kind of technical, but they've taken manuscripts that are held by the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. What's that? This is the Jesus. Well, you're so judgmental. Racist? You don't believe in evolution, do you? Okay. He doesn't believe in the real Jesus. He believes in the Antichrist. He's prideful. Anyhow. Pride goes before so the, the pride uh, right. goes before destruction. Not stop. I had a guy come by here earlier. He's saying hell Satan. Yeah, all the time. Did you find that verse? Yeah, I did. If you want to look it up in your Bible, it's yeah, please. John 13, 34. John 13, 34. I mean, at least we can talk about it civil, not like people who are just yelling and stuff. Yeah, I, come out to, I come out primarily to preach, which is why it's good when there's two of us. So, you said 13, 34? Yes. Haven't you read in the beginning, God created them male and female, not male and female. 1334 it says a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another okay right and and who is Jesus talking to he's talking to his disciples see right here yeah, yeah. yeah 13 so yeah but but we are but we are to love the lost people no doubt and you love people by telling them the truth even if they don't like it reading through the Bible and just like getting my like own perspective from like Word of God that like I've had conversations with from like my own opinion it's just how I feel like you can't reach a lost person by just yelling at them they're doing wrong they're doing wrong that's what Jesus did I get that Jesus did that but we're also not Jesus yeah, he's, so we have he's, he's our example culture is so different now well, the Bible says, lift up your voice like a trumpet and tell my people their sins and their transgressions. Yeah, that's, fine, but that's what we're doing. Well, I just wonder, like, do you all reach people out here? Because if it works, then that's great. Got your attention. True. Yeah, but we're already Christians. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you're not going to find. Have well, you ever had a conversation no. with a non believer? Oh, yeah. I had a guy who was out here. I think he was an atheist. Talked to him for a long time. No. Well, Jesus said to go and to preach. Well, yeah, I know. It's between them and God if they get saved. Okay. We're just we're just preaching the law. The, Bi the Bible says that the law of God is perfect in converting the soul. People don't know if they need to be or that they need to be saved until they realize that they're on their way to hell and that they're lost. They need to know that first, because most people think they're good. They're good people. Oh, I'm good. Ask them. You think you're a good person? If there, if there's heaven and hell, you going? Oh yeah, of course. So what do you think like the line is between like? I know like there's Christians. Do you like there's grace? God gives you grace and forgives your sins. But what's the, like the line between you're a Christian but you didn't do good enough? There, you're either born again or you're or not. You're either going to heaven or you're not. Yeah, but I don't know. It's just kind of like I've had friends that like they drink and everything, and I'm like, you know, like you don't they're, like to do that. they're probably false converts. If somebody's actually born again and you got the whole Holy Ghost and you sin yeah. you're gonna be grieved about that yeah. you know if you're prideful or if you got you know curse words coming out of your mouth or if you go get drunk you can be tore up about that okay but the false convert oh they can go to church and call themselves a Christian and then go out and sin and get the friends together and go sin and maybe make fun of you because you won't go out and 
participate in their sin. See that that's the uh, Jesus parable about the uh, you know the sower and the seed and the soil, the four kinds of soil. That's a, that's a parable about the four false converts. You know you, you know the, the seed is the word of God because Jesus explained it afterwards because the disciples asked him. The seed is the word of God, and it falls on the on the hard ground. The the devil comes up and snatches it away. The birds of the air. Sometimes they get in the shallow ground, come up. You know, real quick, but when there's persecution and pressure, it withers away. And another false convert. And that's what that parable is all about. The Bible says to examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah, I feel like questioning at all. Like, you're probably not. It is faith in Jesus, true faith. Well, it just depends. It's, you know, where do you, where do you go for your truth? Do you go to your feelings? Do you go to modern music, or do you go to the Word of God? See, God you know, says, what's, like what do you mean by life? No, no, no. You got to listen to God's music. Matter of fact, the Bible talks a couple of times about how to worship God in music. Psalm 66 and Psalm 150. Well, I was just wondering because a lot of churches are like, I grew up in the Church of Christ, so they. Yeah, they got a lot of false doctrine. Yeah. I've been going to a different church now, but. Yeah, There's they, a lot of confusion there. Well, that's right, because because what they teach is contrary to the Word of God, which is going to create confusion. Like what, like what examples are there? Well, they think that, that if you don't get baptized, you're not going to heaven. Yeah. Right, that's followed a man by the name of Campbell. I don't forget his first name, but some people call it Campbellite theology. You know, you, that, that's like the Catholics. That's the same thing the Catholics believe. You, you, you can't be saved unless you've been baptized. And the Bible doesn't say that. I just thought... John 3, 5, it says, Jesus says you have to be baptized by water or you will not go into heaven. Could you explain the context of that? Because I don't know, maybe like there's context behind it that I didn't see. Right, John 3, 5. John 3, 5 says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Okay, born of water, that's when, that's when you're born. Okay, when a woman breaks her water, that's what he's talking about. Born of by water, that's your first birth, that's your, your physical birth, and then born of by the Spirit, that's when you're born again through repentance in Jesus Christ and faith toward God. So born of water and the Spirit, he's talking to Nicodemus. Nicodemus was one of the, uh, it's a, well, it calls him a ruler of the Jews, and you know he may have been a, a Pharisee or, or whatever he was. So a man needs to be born of water and, by, and of the Spirit. So uh, Nicodemus, him being a, a ruler of the Jews, the baptism they knew about it was the baptism of cleansing that they did in, in Leviticus for the priests. So that was that baptized, but you have to be born of water. Well, why do you think Jesus, a perfect man, baptized himself? Then? I'm sorry? Jesus was perfect, yet he still baptized himself. So why do you think he said that example and you're not supposed to be? Or like you don't have to? Jesus definitely didn't have to be baptized to from Right, that's what he said. That's what he told his, his cousin John that baptized him. He had, he had John the Baptist baptize him, right? Well, yeah, but like, why did he get baptized if it's not Jesus? Do you remember where that is? I just, I just don't remember off the top of my head. He did not say... In Matthew 3, 14, I think, is what it says. Okay, let's see what we got there. Matthew 3.14. We'll start in 13. It says, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending upon him like a dove and lighting upon him. So, so, so all uh, for righteousness. So all righteousness could be, to be fulfilled. Now, it's not for salvation. Okay, Jesus didn't need to be saved. That's not why he, obviously. So obviously, baptism isn't unto salvation. Okay, Jesus got baptized, yes, but it wasn't because he need, needs to be saved. A Christian should be baptized, but it's not for salvation. What's it for? Well, it's for righteousness. Well, it's baptized unto righteousness. It's well, first of all, Jesus commanded it. Okay, that, that's that's all we really need to know. Jesus said to do it. Okay, but yet, yeah, but. 
You say if you don't follow his commandments then you're not going to heaven, right? Well, so he commanded no, no, no. one of his commandments? Like, no, no. Not you, like the Ten Commandments, but like he commanded it. Right. And like it says, awake the righteousness and sin not for something. So like Jesus says very clearly, the righteous will inherit the kingdom of heaven, the wicked will not. So if Jesus says to be righteous, you have to get baptized, you're right. not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Right. So the question is, how do you become righteous? By following his commandments? No. You become righteous by being born again. Through faith in Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and, resur death, burial, and resurrection, and repentance towards God, that's grief and godly sorrow for all the sin you've done. Because you got no excuses for lying or stealing or fornicating or, you know, whatever, you know, you know your sins, God knows your sins. You should be grieved toward God that you've done those things, because God gave everybody a conscience, okay? You know it's wrong when you've done those things. You know, for, you know hopefully you've never done drugs, but if you have, the first time you did it, you knew it was wrong. You know, the first time you stole some alcohol or whatever, you know, you know it's wrong. So you got, you know, God gave everybody a conscience of what's right and wrong. So you got no excuses. You should be grieved toward God. That's how you become righteousness. We get the imputed righteousness of Christ, is what the Bible says. Okay. So when you're born again, you're going to heaven. Okay. When you're born again, you get the Holy Spirit of God. So if you do sin, you're going to be grieved toward God, and you're going to. It's part of the sanctification process. You're going to be able to, to overcome sin more and more. For example, I, before I got saved, I used to love to go drinking. I used to love to get drunk. You know, I didn't get saved until I was 30 years old. I loved it. And then I got saved, and that day I realized I needed to stop getting drunk. And then, you know, to my shame, probably two or three times after that, I actually did get drunk. Okay? But I was grieved over it then. You know, it wasn't like, can't, you know, I can't wait to sober up so I can go do it again anymore. It was different. And, you know, it's been decades since I've had, you know, since I've gotten drunk or anything like that. So it's not like you're going to get saved and boom, all of a sudden you're never going to have a prideful thought again. Okay. But if you got the Spirit of God, got uh, the Holy Spirit, then God's going to help you over time because you're going to work together with Him and say, God, what am I doing? Why do I keep doing this? I need help. You know, you're not going to, like maybe some of your friends, unfortunately, call themselves a Christians and live like the world anyway. So you don't go, you, you should keep his commandments. If you love Jesus, you're going to love his commandments, you're going you're gonna to read his commandments, and you're going to strive to do his commandments. But if you're born again, you're going to, going to heaven anyway. You can't sin your way out of heaven if, you're, if you've been born again. Well, what do you think God's about a born again person who turns atheist? Do they go to heaven? Then they haven't been born again. They're a false convert. Again, that's about that's the parable about the sower and the seed. Jesus said, if you don't understand the parable about the sower and the seed, how will you understand all parables? Is the way he said it. So it was about false converts. If I gave you a book, would you read it? Let me, let me show it to you. I'd rather be educated about certain things and everything. Well, this is mostly Bible. Yeah. Yeah. So everything in this life will come to pass. But only what's done for Jesus Christ will last. Again, in God's word, in God's word says that uh I'll read it. That the, the Good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of, friend of mine wrote that. Of this world. Well, thank you for talking to us. Yep. And that, that, that's that's mostly it's mostly Bible verses in there. Yeah. So, and he's just explaining uh, what the Bible verses mean, just like we've been talking right here. So, if you if you read that, I think that'll help help with what we've been talking about, and that'll be good. All right. What what's your name, if I may add? My name's Kenneth. My name's Catherine. Catherine, mm -hmm. and your name? Ivy. Catherine and Ivy. God bless you, girls. Make you, uh, it can make you think differently. It can, uh, it can make you, uh, you know, treat people nicer and dress more modestly. A lot of people out here need to teach their daughters how to dress more modestly. If they had any respect for them, they would teach them how to dress before they walk out of the house.